Welcome back. Facebook's privacy fallout now a legal issue. The social media giant faces its first lawsuit over the Cambridge Analytica scandal. Washington, D.C. filing a suit claiming that the company failed to protect user data and had weak oversight. Joining us right now is Jennifer Fonstad. She is the co-founder of Aspect Ventures. Jennifer, good to see you. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having Talk me. Talk to us about Aspect Ventures first so that we can get some context in terms of how you see this. Sure. So Aspect Ventures is an early stage venture capital firm. We invest in technology companies typically when they start at get started so it could be three or four founders with a new idea getting 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 going and did becoming you, the next Facebook did you first invest in Facebook um, my co-founder actually was the uh, was a early investor in Facebook which was a smart move yeah. which worked out what do you see about what do you think today you know, about these issues that the company faces in terms of data breaches Yes, I think that, so the data breaches problem is a broader uh, privacy and security problem that we're seeing across all sectors, to be, to be frank. But the issues around Facebook, I think, are much more about what obligations they have and what their responsibilities are about privacy. And I think that's a, a, a newer and newer challenge for technology companies as they continue to build their business, develop new business models, and they're trying to identify how can they, how can they take these new business models and still manage um, all the possibilities from that. So I, I think it was a shock to a lot of people, to some people, uh, several months ago when uh, the uh, journal's uh, news side uh, reported that uh, they, Facebook was sharing data with other companies. People didn't necessarily know that. But on the other hand, a lot of people, you would think, understand when they're enjoying this free service that they're sharing a lot of data and it's being used some way. What, it, how big is the, do you see this legal exposure, given that anyone who uses Facebook has got to know the data is being used in some well, what's, way? What's interesting about it is I think the presumption was that the data was being used in a way that would, would be useful to the users. So, for example, you see a lot of advertising when you watch television, when you watch um, Fox Business. But the question is, are you watching advertising that's relevant to you? So the whole point of using data was to identify and, and uh, identify information that would be interesting to you as a user. So it should have been it, clear. It, it seemed to me yesterday the stock really got hit by the latest round of revelations about all these partners, big companies, Amazon, et cetera, that they had partnered with, mm -hmm. uh, which appeared to be in violation of the consent decree uh, that they had struck in 2011, I think it was. Did you, were you surprised that the market, I mean, oftentimes you have these revelations about Facebook, the stock is fine. Yesterday it was not. Now, is there a difference? Are we at a tipping point here where people are taking these things more seriously, looking possibly to the EU to start imposing big fines? What's the deal? I think it's a great question. I think that the markets have been watching how Facebook has been handling these issues over a very long period of time. And I think that there's just a, a building crescendo, if you will, and whether we've hit a tipping point, um, I don't know. I think markets in general are more skittish. Yeah. Where do you see the growth? I mean, venture capital money has had a real impact on IPOs. And then we're seeing a big uh, year for IPOs next year. Wall Street oh, Journal yeah. is reporting that Pinterest is preparing for an offering early next year. It's one of the many unicorns in the pipeline. So tell us where you see growth and what your, what your take is on all of these IPOs for, for the year ahead. Yeah, I think we have a lot of very large and exciting companies coming out into the market over the next year, Pinterest being just one of many. Slack is considering an IPO, Uber, Lyft, um, Airbnb. There's some big and very successful tech companies that are still private that can get into the public markets. And then we have a whole slew of companies that are coming along behind it. You're looking, we're looking a lot at artificial intelligence, really moving into product intelligence and really driving the next wave of companies. Uh, Kathleen Smith said yesterday from Renaissance that she thinks that the IPO market is in such bad shape with globally 60% of IPOs trading below their IPO price for this year that the IPO market could actually be closed in the first quarter of next year like no companies go public. She's very worried. Hmm. But it's a, it's a big group of companies that they could sit on it in the, in, yes, in the month of that, January, right. but then they'll end up going public in the second quarter or later on in the year. Yeah, or fourth quarter or 2020. Did, yeah. these, these are exciting companies. They're going to get out at some point. Jennifer, good to see you. Thanks Cheers. so much. Thank Jennifer so much Fonstead.